In this video, let's talk about deadlocks. Deadlocking situation usually happens within threads that have nested locks. So basically, uh, let's take two thread example. Let's say this is the first thread and this is the second thread. So when both threads are trying to wait for each other, okay, so thread one waits for thread two, thread two waits for thread one, then they get into a deadlock situation no one can proceed. Let's jump into Visual Studio and see an example. Let's close the current solution and try to create a new one. Let's create a console application and let's call this uh, deadlock example and click on the create button now let's imagine we're working with a e-commerce system right so where we have users and we have orders so depending on which uh, functionality you're looking at sometimes you're managing users sometimes you're managing orders so let's say uh, we could be managing users and another one is managing orders and managing users could mean that we're managing a order within a user, right? So this would go from user to order. And managing a order could sometimes mean that we're managing a user within the order. So the other way. And because of this, we might run into a complicated resource management when we want to get consistent behaviors by using uh, multi-threading programming so in that case one thread right so for example thread one uh, wants to lock the user object first lock user first and then lock the order now thread two wants to lock the order object first and then lock the uh, user so Let's have uh, some code going. So we might have a function that is called manage uh, order or manage user first, for example. And in here, we're gonna have a lock. So here, because we're managing users, we, we uh, lock the user lock first. And we don't have the user lock declared yet, but let's continue writing so that we don't break our flow of thoughts. We lock the user lock first, and then let's just console right line and we say user management acquired the user lock and do a thread sleep and let's sleep for let's say a second so this is to simulate the work takes some time and then internally once it finishes uh, doing something with the user it wants to continue to do something with the order so it needs to order object so i'm going to do a order lock and here i'm going to just console dot right line and i'm going to say user management acquired the typo here let me remove one of the c's so acquired order lock right and now we're going to have the reverse which is the order let me just copy and paste and just change a few words so instead of manage user we're going to change this to manage order and first it wants to acquire order lock first right and then here we're going to say order management acquired the order lock and now inside it once we uh, process the order we want to process the user within the lock so we lock the user secondly and here we're saying the order management uh, acquired the user lock and let's say that the user managed user this uh, manage user functionality takes longer time let's say two seconds and manage order takes shorter time which is one second and let's just declare those locks so object user lock new object and uh, order lock equals new object all right now let's create a thread so we'll have a new thread and what this new thread does is to manage order because i'm going to call manage user within the main thread i'm calling this function directly within the main thread now two threads are going right? one is the worker thread the other one is the main thread and i'm going to say thread.join so let's wait till it finish 
and uh, let's do a console dot read line. And then here, we're going to say console dot write line, the program finished. And now let's run the application. Okay. So now you see this two line, but you don't see program finished. Press any key to exit. Why is that? Well, let's look at these two lines. User management acquired the user log. Order management acquired the order log, but it never actually print the other line within the nested log. In each thread, it doesn't do it. Why is that? Well, you can see that manage user is called within the main thread and it takes two seconds and manage order takes one second to complete. So when the start is called and when this manage user function is called, what happened was that each author acquired its own lock, right? So manage user acquired the user lock and manage order function acquired the order lock. But when the manage order try to proceed to acquire the user lock, it knows that it's being blocked by the user management, right? Because it's still holding this. Whereas the user management is waiting for the order lock to be released in order to continue it. But at the same time, the order management is being blocked by the user management. Therefore, no one can release a lock and no one can continue. Okay. So in this type of scenario, we have a hierarchy and we have a complex resource uh, sharing. We need to try our best to avoid having such a strategy of a nested locks because nested lock can potentially cause deadlocks. Okay, that's everything I want to cover in this video. If any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.